really brief, just really proud uh, of our guys and the, the way that they responded to their opening week performance. Uh, I think it showed a lot about you know what we can be uh, in terms of coming together, not allowing uh, all of the noise or distraction uh, to inhibit uh, our training and our getting better and getting prepared to win a game and, and correcting mistakes. Uh, thought our guys played uh, much more free with, with much less hesitation. Um, and that was, you know, we, we had kind of two themes of the week, if you will. And one was a bunker mentality was that we were going to let week ones or we were going to make sure that week one's performance drew us closer and we weren't going to worry about anybody other than uh, who's in that building. And two was cut it loose, w meaning, you know, take the training to the field and, and cut it loose. Don't evaluate. Don't tiptoe. Don't hesitate. Don't think. Uh, just go. And I thought our guys did that. So, you know, happy with the direction we're headed. Um, I think, you know, when you watch the film, uh, we are nowhere near a finished product. You know, we we won that game because we, we played so hard uh, and we've got really good players. Uh, so I think that's that's a start. You know, when, when you, you've got Good players that play hard, uh, you got a chance. Now we got to get those good players playing hard and playing with better fundamentals and technique uh, and execution each and every play. Uh, because you uh, playing a team like USC or really anybody left on our schedule, you're not going to be able to mask uh, some of those uh, fundamental and technique errors with just effort and talent uh, like we were on Saturday. So. The guys see that they're hungry. They they want to keep getting better. They like, uh, they like the feeling of improvement. I think they're they're proud too. Uh, but they also know that, uh, you know, we gotta we gotta go uh, into a hostile environment to play one of the best teams in the country. Uh, that's playing really really well right now, and we're gonna need to play uh, not just really hard and not just with the talent that we have, but we're gonna have to play. Uh, very, very fundamentally sound play after play after play uh, to to stay competitive in this ball game. Questions? Two questions, Tom. One, uh, you know, the big thing that was has, that's been written about a lot is that you were six and zero against ranked opponents at Houston. First off, did you? Uh, you clearly, I know you embraced that 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 record, but how did you get? those guys to believe when they went up against Florida State, when they went against Houston, to maybe play maybe higher than what they think they can do? They believed in the fact that we were going to be the best trained team on the field that Saturday and a team that played with the greatest purpose, uh, which was the true unabashed love for the guy next to you and, and your coaches. Uh, and that was real. And, uh, you know, obviously we weren't undefeated, so at, at times we hit some speed bumps. But, um, you know, I, I think I've, I've told the story. You know, I had an assistant from Oklahoma call me the day after uh, we beat Oklahoma, and he said, I've been here 17 years, and that's the hardest playing, hardest hitting team we played. And as a head coach, that's. Regardless of the score, if, if you can have uh, an opponent win, lose, or draw, call you the next day and tell you that, then uh, you know I, I think you're onto something something pretty good. And so, I, I think just the belief in how hard and and how well that we train, and then the purpose behind why we play and and what motivates us each and every snap. And do you feel like? This week is almost a mulligan of sorts. You're going to play a very high-profile game, national TV. Everyone's going to be watching. Um, you know, it's almost kind of a uh, it's a make it's like a make good for the season opener. Whoever's watching, you get another chance to show something to the to the nation. I no, I, I think every week. I mean, we're so far removed from Maryland. <laughs> you know, uh, that wasn't us. 
uh, we can't replay that game, so why why dwell on it? And so I think any kind of added motivation derived from how you performed, you know, two weeks ago or whatever it is, is is probably wasted energy. So I think each each game poses its own motivation. And this one, the, the motivation is you're you're playing one of the best teams in the country, one of the premier programs in the history of college football in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, there's there's plenty of motivation there um, regardless of what you want to show or prove to anybody, especially now with the bunker mentality. The only people we have to prove to um, prove anything to is is our teammates. And you're right, Dennis. Coach, um, kind of a two-parter. Is there anything more you know about Shane Bouchelle as far as his progress? And then if if Sam is is going to play, did, have you seen anything with him that maybe his temperament, his, his makeup of how he's a different freshman that could maybe handle this kind of stage? Uh, yeah, not nothing new with Shane other than he's getting better every day. Uh, we, we, we certainly we weren't going to try to test him yesterday or today. So I think tomorrow will be a, a, a big benchmark knowing that, that we practice tomorrow afternoon. Um, and so I said every day he's getting better, but every day is a new day, you know? And so um, is he better today than he was yesterday? Yes. Uh, hopefully he will be tomorrow and, and be able to go. Uh, your, your question about Sam, no, I, I mean, this is, from the day I met him, this is an extremely mature guy. Uh, you don't go through what he went through in eighth grade uh, and all of a sudden have to be the man of your household uh, at, in eighth grade and, and not mature uh, very quickly. So uh, he's, he's a bit of an old soul and um, really, really mature for uh, a guy his age and in his position. And I, I think that's what has allowed him to, to step into this role uh, maybe a little bit easier than, than most. Hey, yeah, Coach, I know this kind of predates you a little bit, but over the last two years, this team is 2-8 and eight in road games, and they've actually been outscored 35-21 to 21 in those games. Talk about just the challenge of playing on the road and how do you teach these guys to win uh, away from DKR? I think the challenge is sticking to your routine. You know, we, we talk to or we talk to our players uh, about – Every great player, one of the one of the things that is is commonplace, whether it's Michael Jordan or Peyton Manning, uh, and Jerome Bettis has spoken uh, to our staff and team. Every great player has a routine, and they do the same thing every day, and they do the same thing every Friday of game week. They do the same thing uh, every Saturday morning of, of a game, and so I think. Excuse me. <coughs> I think. If you can make just getting on a plane the only deviation in that routine, then uh, then you've succeeded. And so I think that's probably the biggest challenge is just making sure that we're dialed in and focused just as if it were a home game. The only difference is we're going, instead of a 30-minute bus ride to our hotel, we're getting on a plane for a couple hours. Other than that, the, the meal's going to be the same. The times are going to be the same. You know, Our pregame routine is going to be the same. So uh, that's the biggest thing for me. Um, do you have an update on Garrett Gray, and do you anticipate Reese having an impact this week now that his suspension's up? No, uh, say it again. I'm sorry. Do you anticipate Reese having an impact or playing this week now that his suspension is up? Um, don't know yet. I, I think that's we still got to figure out, you know, where we want to head with with the game plan as far as Reese is concerned. Uh, Garrett will not play uh, this week. Uh, he's got a sprain, uh, so I, I think he's week by week. Uh, Patrick Hudson, we're still waiting to uh, get the MRI results uh, on him. And so I, I don't think, uh, I don't know about Reese. He's going to practice with us and not the scout team just because uh, of Garrett's situation. Had Garrett not gotten hurt, I, I think Reese would have probably stayed with the scout team. But since uh, we're going to be without Garrett, he'll, he'll practice with, with the offense this week. Coach, what kind of a role do you envision Gerard Hurd having this week? A uh, big, you know. Uh, hopefully, um, maybe even bigger than than last week. You know, not 
in terms of plays. Hopefully, you know, we can get a couple of those plays off the ground that, that kind of got stuffed. But um, no, that's, this is a guy, I, I think it's, it's important whether, whenever Shane gets healthy, fully healthy, um, you know, I would envision you'll see Gerard in most every game behind center at some point. Uh, and when Shane is, is fully healthy, that'll allow him to maybe go back and devote most of his practice time and meeting time to playing wide receiver. But um, knowing that we can jog him back there and, and take some snaps and, and add a change of pace uh, for the defense, I think, I think is, is a weapon. And the, the good thing about him, which is different than most um, wildcat quarterbacks, is you know, he can throw the football. And uh, you know, he played quarterback here at a very high level uh, for a couple years. And so uh, I think that dimension of it is, is a lot different than most that you know, jog a running back or a, uh, a wide receiver back there. This is a guy that's, that's played college quarterback you know, for a couple years. And so if you want to put a bunch of human beings in the box to, to stop the run, then you know, he's capable of, of throwing it over your head. Yeah, Tom, uh, how important was it to, for them to put some good football on film? And uh, how much easier does that make preparation for a tough opponent? Yeah, I, I think it, not necessarily on film. I think it was good for our guys to go out and see what we're capable of. Um, and I think it allows them, when you talk about what that means as far as preparing and game planning, it, it gives them the confidence and the trust in our staff, too, that um, hey, if you know, if we do what we did uh, on Saturday, uh, you know, good things are going to happen. Which is cut it loose, uh, trust your training, and and go as hard as you can. You know, really good things are going to happen. You're right, Ricky. Coach, as a as a head coach, do you like having these kind of you know marquee games, if you will, on your schedule in non conference? And and then um, also, do you have any memories of the '05 Texas USC championship game? Uh, I, I have mixed emotions. I think it's great for our fans. I think it's great for our program uh, to have these. I think it's a little different, though, when you play nine conference games. Uh, it, it makes you know, scheduling, especially in a, a time when we're trying to rebuild this thing from, from three straight losing seasons, um, makes things maybe a little bit more difficult. Uh, to, to play. I mean, this year we're going to play 11 Power 5 teams. Uh, and a lot of those will be bowl teams as well. And so uh, that's, that's a tough schedule. And um, I, I like the fact that we get to, get to play these games. Um, I kind of like Alabama's model of playing them at a neutral site, uh, you know, each year. But um, I'm happy for our fans. I think it's great that, you know, two of the you know, premier brands in college football history uh, are going to face off. And uh, 2005, I don't remember, I knew I was going to get asked, and I tried for the life of me to figure out where I was. I can't remember exactly. I think I might have even been at the National Coaches Convention, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I do remember just watching Vince and just being awestruck and just remembering how many great players were on that field, uh, you know. And then obviously the fourth down call down there on the – whatever it was, seven yard line or four yard line, um, you know, was one that I remember watching very closely. Uh, Tom, with such two weird games to start the, the, with the results, I mean, have you gotten closer to forming an identity for the team or is the quarterback injuries kind of slowed that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, I'd be remiss if I, I didn't admit to that a little bit. You know, we're still trying to figure out who we are a little bit, uh, especially on that side of the ball. I, I think on defense, we, we took some major, major strides um, from a, you know, a recklessness standpoint, you know, and I hate to use that word in football because it, maybe it, people interpret it as you, you're, you're not playing discipline. That's not what I mean. I mean, you know, figuratively lighting your hair on fire and just going, you know. And, and so I took. I think we took some major strides there. I think, you know, we made a huge commitment to running the football because of 
what we were playing on the other side. We knew we had to possess the ball. Uh, we needed to keep our defense fresh and, and off the field as much as possible. But that is who we want to be, too. I mean, we're, I, I don't know uh, any championship program that's, that's ever one, not being able to run the football effectively. And so I think people saw, you know, Shane throw the ball 54 times in the first game. Again, I'll keep reminding people we were down 20 points in the second quarter uh, and playing a defense that, quite frankly, was had structured themselves to, to try to take away the run. And so the score and the circumstance of that game kind of kind of dictated that. But um, I, I think we know who we want to be. It's can we be it uh, against really good people? Tom, what um, in Gary Johnson looked like he flashed, looked like he's got some instincts. Um, what do you see? Who stood out to you, I guess, um, in that game? And did he? Uh, yeah, Gary did. Uh, he did a, a heck of a job in his you know first major action you know he he recommitted himself uh i don't i don't even know if we announced you know he he had an ankle injury that he was dealing with towards the end of camp that really really hampered him missed a lot of practice um and you know he recommitted himself uh on you know the the, the week's preparation leading up to san jose state and it was it was good to see him perform well i think obviously you know holton hill uh, you know, is is a guy that's playing uh, at a really high level right now. Uh, I think Malik is playing playing really well, playing um, really good football. Um, you know, for us, and you know, making the plays that he should, making some plays that only he can make. Uh, I, I know he he left a couple out there. You know, that one sack where he was clean to the quarterback and couldn't get him down. You know, sticks in his cross. So. Um, He's doing that, and then I, I just, you know, a guy that that goes unsung probably is Jake McMillan. You know, he is. That's a guy I'd want in my bunker. I can tell you that he's he's a guy you know that you want walking by your side in a dark alley at night too. Back in the middle, Brian. Tom, what impresses you, and same time concerns you about Sam Darnold? <laughs> uh. The things that impress me are the things that concern me since we're playing against him. Uh, I, and I, I knew Sam. I uh, recruited him a little bit when I was at Ohio State. His uh, high school is right down the road from, from where my mom lives. And so um, really football smart guy. Um, can make every throw in the book. Um, really can. And... Um, from all different kinds of arm angles and so and I think when you see him and you, you see his stature you think oh this guy can't run the guy can run uh, and and he's pretty elusive and so <laughs> I was telling John you know when I kind of have a debriefing meeting with the defense uh, you know on Monday mornings you know just to kind of get a heads up on who these guys are before I, I click on the film and um, you know, it was like the scene from Armageddon, you know, when Billy Bob Thornton's talking and uh, Owen Wilson says, so scariest environment imaginable, right? That's all you had to say, Todd. That's all you had to say, scariest environment imaginable. Um, so this is a really good football team, really talented. Um, and obviously he's the, you know, the, the gas in the engine. Tom, just revisiting your quarterback situation to understand if Shane's healthy, is he the starter for this, or the, is there more at play than just a, a health concern with him? No, no, no more at play. I, I think Shane's got to, you know, if Shane's healthy, he's got to go prove that he's also competent in practice. So that's just like anywhere else, uh, or just like any other week, I should say. Um, so, no, I, I think if Shane can throw tomorrow and is fully cleared tomorrow, then he's going to go with the ones, but he's got to obviously have a really good practice to make sure that he stays with the ones on, on Wednesday. Front middle, Bob. You've talked a lot about that bunker mentality. You guys don't play another home game until October 7th. Is this a really good chance to, to see over the next month just how tight this group really is? Yeah, I think I, I mean, I, I didn't even know that 
Um, so I, I think, you know, you get so singularly focused, you don't, you don't really worry about the big picture too much about all of that. Um, if I were sitting in your shoes, I'd probably say, yeah, I mean, that, the answer is, um, I guess you're right, the road game, off week, road game, um, you know, we'll, our togetherness will be tested quite a bit, but it'll also be an opportunity to bring us together. And then is there, you plan on bringing anybody in this week, old players that might bring up the Texas USC 05 game? Is there anything you'll do on that front? Uh, you know, Vince comes around, so, you know, I'm, I'm sure he'll be he'll be around, and we, we welcome that. Obviously, we got one on our staff and Michael Huff uh, that is, uh, you know, knows very intimately about that that game in, in 05. So, uh, there'll be, I mean, everybody's welcome. Every former player is always welcome. And so, will there be a few more this week than, than most? Maybe, because those guys like to relive those things, you know. But uh, other than Michael and Vince, none that really scheduled. Thank you, Bill, Jim. Tom, hitting in that box score was another missed field goal. Is that now a worry for you? How do you fix that? How closely are you managing that? And what do you do with it this week? It is a worry. Uh, I mean, we're 0 of 3 with one block and two misses. Um, I thought that the two guards handled the internal pressure much better, uh, which was good to see. I wish we, we hadn't needed that lesson. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to. We're going to evaluate where he's at, uh, and you know, make sure that some of the other guys are getting quality kicks uh, in practice. And the, the hard part with the kicker is, you know, if if you or if my grandma was at practice, she would she could tell you who the starting kicker should be um, because the, the kid had that good of a fall camp. Uh, so we've got to figure out a way for him to translate how well he did in fall camp to to game day. In the middle, Steve. Coach, uh, you guys as coaches always talk about teams grow the most from the first game to the second game. Do you think your team grew the most from the first game to the second game that you've seen so far? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, I, I hope we continue to grow. Uh, we we can't we can't stay stagnant. Uh, that's for sure. But. Um, <coughs> Much closer, much tighter, much um, much more um, focused and purposeful in practice last week. So um, I'm hoping to see that and more this week. Chris, go ahead. Uh, going back to last week, what uh, what kind of goes into preparing a true freshman QB to start, and then also how does that affect what you can what you want to do from week to week in your offense? Uh, I. I don't know that you prepare him any differently, especially a guy like Sam that's been here, uh, that, that's been through spring practice and summer conditioning and training camp and all that. You know, that's is as prepared from that standpoint as, as really any first-time starting quarterback, whether it's a true freshman or not. I think the biggest thing you have to do is you got to condense. Um, you know, we – you go through there, and I, I just remember a, a point in the, the game planning last week where we were talking about third down, and we said, okay, hey, from third and three to six, this is what San Jose has shown. We want to do this, 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 and this, but if they show this, then we want to do this, this, this. And finally, Tim and I looked at each other. Was, we can't do that to Sam. We can't. We're going to do this, and we're, we're going to try like heck to make sure we're right, uh, and we're going to give him very small bites uh, of of the offense so that he can get good at them and, and perfect them. And so that's just always been, you know, kind of our philosophy, young, inexperienced quarterbacks. You try to condense as much as you can. I can follow up. What, uh, what percentage of bites would you say Sam had last week? I don't know. You guys always want quantification. <laughs> I have no idea. Are you right, Sam? Tom, two things. Uh, Given Shane's fluid situation health-wise, how late in the week do you anticipate making a decision on that front? I don't. I, I don't. I mean, it, it, I'll, I'll know when I know. I, and secondly, 
given the challenge on the road, the caliber team you're facing, how, how ready mentally do you feel like your group is for this? We'll find out Saturday. <laughs> um, I, I feel like they, they will be. We're not going to leave any stone unturned. We're not going to um, leave any I not, not dotted and any T not crossed. So um, we'll be in as good a, good a place mentally as we can be. Uh, so I, I have confidence that, that they'll respond. This is a, they showed me a lot last week uh, w with how they responded. And now we've got to take yet another step in you know, maturing to go be able to beat a top five team on the road. Tom, people would look at Gerard and say that he might be more of a fit for the, you know, the offenses you've run in the past. Is it too late for him to be in the mix to try to be the starting quarterback on this team? Why wouldn't he be? in the mix with as good of a runner. And as you said, he played the quarterback at a high level, four-star recruit, all that. I don't think it's ever too late. Um, is that the direction we want to head? I, I don't know because I think we're still very optimistic on um, the, the speed and um, shortness of time for Shane's recovery. Um, now, if this thing drags on for a couple weeks, I think that's when you got to say, Okay, big boy. Let's let's go give you instead of a package. You're going to learn how to play quarterback and um, two very different things, though. Uh, rather than memorizing a couple plays versus knowing the entire offense and executing it and managing the um, managing the game. Uh, so uh, I I think you know uh, it's, what was it eight carries for 39 yards and we're we're already making those kind of assertions I think is a little bit premature um, and 0 for 1 throwing I, I think right something like that um, so I, I, I definitely think that's premature but it's something that's um, not out of the realm of possibility for him to grow in that role you know should we need him to Tom, kind of two questions on Kendall Moore. One, what went into him playing more this week than he did against Maryland? And did you like or did you feel he gave you a boost in the run game? Uh, we felt like if we were going to make a commitment to running the football, we needed to put our best run blocker uh, at that position in the game. Um, played well at times. Uh, you know, the, he did some things that if, if they show back up against University of Southern California, it's going to be a bad day. Uh, so we got to get some mistakes and technique issues corrected. But, um, you know, went the wrong, right way, got in front of people. Um, and, you know, well, I mean, it, it's, it goes to show you just, you know, why mass is important in running the football. You know, 255 pound man is going to be able to displace another human being a lot better than a 230 pound man. Um, and that's, I don't know if it's physics or biomechanics, it's some kind of, some kind of science word. Uh, and so that's why we brought him here. Now he's, he's got to do it at a much more consistent level, but we were pleased with his, his first real action. Middle Roger. Chris Warren displaced a few guys Saturday. Is that the kind of running that you anticipate him when he was rolling pretty good last year and got hurt, didn't get many touches in the first game, but what he brought Saturday? Yeah, I, I was was really happy. I, I think I said, you know, after the game, Chris has um, done a really good job in the nine months that we've been here of making sure that he pays very close attention to how low and how physical of a runner he needs to be. Um, I think, you know, there were times in the spring where, I mean, this was a kid that you know, had a bullseye on his chest because he ran so upright and, um, you know, he, he took a lot of pounding because of it. And I think, so the physicality of his running and his running style and, and running behind his pads, I was really happy with him. He's made a lot of improvement there. Uh, we've still got to clean up some things from a vision standpoint and who he's reading and 
uh, when to go into what hole and all that stuff. Uh, but from an effort and pad level standpoint, was really, really pleased with the, the game that he had. Yeah, you mentioned your grandma would be able to watch practice and know who the kicker is. If she saw your games and USC games, would she think you have a good chance to go in there and win this week? Oh, I think those are two different animals. You didn't know my grandma grew up playing soccer. She knows kickers. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. No, she does not. Um, Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm so trying. Oh, we should. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we are an underdog. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, this is they they've been doing this a while at Southern Cal. We haven't. Uh, great season last year. Uh, quarterback is as good as there is in the country. Skill position players all over the place that are as good as there is in the country. Um, coaching staff and a scheme that's as good as there is in the country. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say they're definitely the favorite. Got time for two last ones, Brian, and then Jim. Tom McCall to talk about the running game. Uh, I wanted to ask you, you've gone from, you compared the offensive line to the 2014 USC group, and then Saturday. Compared their potential. Their potential, okay. Yeah. And then after the game said they were, they were above average. Mm -hmm. What, where are you mentally with those guys right now, and where do you think their performance should be right now? Um, I'm, I'm in a good place. Uh, they, they played better. Um, and I don't just say that because we were playing San Jose State. I mean, they, they played better. There, there's no doubt about it. They played more um, cohesively, which was good to see. A lot, lot better communication, faster reaction and recognition to, to movement. So uh, we still got a ways to go to, to reach our potential, but uh, was happy with the improvement they made. OK, you know, uh, nobody's really separated themselves. Tristan has, has played well, um, you know, and Denzel has had flashes. Tom, at, at Texas, we've seen quarterback questions rile up the fan base uh, as a head coach. I imagine you've got to try to figure out if you go into a season with an established starter and then things mature to a point where you make a change, how do you manage the locker room on that? Is that, a, is that an issue for the locker room? No, I don't think so. You know, I, the locker room wants to win. Um, and, you know, we, we're professionals at, at our profession um, for a reason and, it's, you know, because we should have the best knowledge of, of how to get those wins out of, out of our team as coaches. And so I think, you know, the players, if you've done a good job in the nine months that you've been at a place earning their trust, then the, the players trust you and coach whatever whatever you think is uh, we need to do to win is, is what we'll do. And so, um, yeah, that, that's never never really crossed my mind, you know, because you know, they they just want to win, and um, we're we're not to that point. I mean, our starting quarterback got hurt, you know, so we're we're not at that point. Good. Thank you.